To some, they are the heroes of the Capellan Confederacy. To others, they're the dastardly scourge of House Davion. Some call them vicious raiders. Others call them brave champions. With McCarran's armored cavalry, all of these statements are at least partially true. Without a doubt, the McCarran's armored cavalry have forged a lasting impression in the history of the Inner Sphere. More than just mercenaries, the Big Mac, as it's often called, built their reputation on bringing a very personal form of war to House Davion wherever possible. Starting in the early 31st century, Mac racked up win after win on battlefields of the Inner Sphere. Aggressive by nature, this mercenary enterprise often accepted contracts that allowed them to go on the offensive and raid their enemies. The understandable downside of this is that the people and forces that they raided tended to see them as brutal and even cruel in their conduct. It all began in 2930 when Lord Gamala McCarran raised a unit using his personal funds. Strangely enough, their first longtime employer was House Davion. The contracted work was consistent for 40 years until Lord McCarran was killed in an attack by forces sent to New Roads 3 by the Draconis Combine in 2970. With the transfer of leadership to his son, Castor, the Mac took a contract with the Lyran Commonwealth, which pitted them against the Free Worlds League. This arrangement was successful until 2991, when Castor McCarran decided that the contracted payment from the Lyrans was too low to compensate for the risk. Without due notice to the Lyrans, the Mac left the Lyran Commonwealth and traveled to the Draconis Combine, where they quickly found new work. Naturally, this unexpected shift was not taken well by House Steiner, who ended up placing a bounty on Castor's head for the insult. By 2995, Castor McCarran was once again unhappy with the compensation his company was receiving. This time, the Capellans were more than willing to welcome the Mac, even going so far as to offer settlement and access to a support network on the planet Menke, which could be used for the unit's permanent base of operations when not deployed. With this shift to Capellan space, it became known among the unit and historians that with their early history, the Mac had fought for each of the successor states at least once, and against all of them except for one. Since signing on to serve with the Capellans, the Mac established deep ties with the region and with House the Owl. Except for a short stint of service with the Free Worlds League following the murder of Castor McCarran in a bar fight over a dancing girl, that must have been one heck of a story, McCarran's armored cavalry has been fighting with the Capellans ever since. After Holleran and Stick, there wasn't a mech warrior in the entire confederation who didn't burn for revenge against the wolf's dragoons. To them, the dragoons represented everything they hated. Amoral sellswords who worked for the highest bidder. Resentment toward the dragoons began to spill over into resentment towards all mercenary regiments. And with Big Mac being the best-known merc regiment in Capellan employ, we took a lot of heat for it. As you might expect, the old man didn't take any of this very well. Colonel Archibald McCarran hadn't been in command for the unit very long, and was still a little unsure of himself. Wanting to prove the value of Merc units to the Chancellor, he volunteered us for the raid on New Valencia to teach the Dragoons a lesson. As it turned out, this wasn't one of our more successful missions. Colonel Lindra Chender Sakar has quoted in 10 Years with McCarran, a series of feature stories distributed by the Capellan Wire Service in 3008. With the arrival of Jamie Wolfe's Dragoons on the border between House Liao and the Federated Sons, it was only a matter of time before the two biggest bullies on the block would meet and have a tussle. For McCarran's Arvern Cavalry, this would be a tremendous shock and blow to their record. In what had been designed as a deep raid into Fed Sun territory, something the Mac had excelled at in the past, the planet of New Valencia would be the stage for the first contact with the Dragoons. Waiting for them was Gamma Regiment's commander, Colonel Wilhelmina Korscht, along with three Dragoon regiments. The situation seemed to favor McCarran's forces as they landed. The Dragoons were hobbled by their large number of non-combatants that they had to protect from harm, as well as a seriously depleted aerospace contingent that couldn't be ready for the fight. Initial gains were swift, and it seemed like McCarran was going to be able to declare victory after just a few days of fighting. However, when the Dragoons retreated to a defensible fortress, they were able to hold out and run missions against McCarran's supply lines. Time ran out for the attack when word of the Iridani Light Horse being sent in with three regiments by the Davions forced McCarran to retreat from the planet and leave the system. 
Word of attacks on civilians during the occupation of the planet damaged the reputation of the Mac, as well as the Dragoons whose presence on the planet was deemed the cause of the invasion in the first place. A retaliatory raid on the McCarran base world of Menke resulted in significant damage to infrastructure, supplies, and mechs. This led to outrage from McCarran, who insisted on help from the Capellans to extract revenge. However, Maximilian Liao did not go along with the reckless plan. In 3015, a second regiment of the armored cavalry was formed, and Marcus Burton was picked to lead it by Archibald McCarran. The orders for, were for Baron to create the biggest, meanest assault regiment the Inner Sphere has ever seen. Barton took to his work with vigor, and over the course of the next 30 years, the second regiment of Mac stomped all over the Inner Sphere. Following the spat with the Dragoons, McCarran's armored cavalry primarily served as garrison units across Capellan-held planets, and it wasn't until 3022 when Maximilian Liao felt intense pressure to respond to a series of very successful raids by House Davion and let the Big Mac off their leash. He gave them orders to attack House Davion held worlds in whatever method and time they saw fit. McCarran took advantage of this freedom by planning a series of high-risk strikes into House Davion systems. This campaign is known as McCarran's Long March, and was tremendously successful as the pre-placed jump ships and strategic locations allowed McCarran to quickly move his forces between worlds, which multiplied his unit's strength. The Mac ran roughshod over Davion space, crushing garrison units, destroying critical infrastructure, and defeating multiple mercenary units employed by the Federated Sons. On the planet Marlet, which was considered a stronghold planet, the Mac attacked and then breached Fort Borgoyne, which was considered impregnable. It fell on the third day of the assault. When McCarran's forces returned to Capellan space, they were greeted as heroes by the people and political establishment. Maximilian Liao personally rewarded the MAC unit commanders with commendations and promises of land and titles when they retired from active service. This moment marks the high point for McCarran's armored cavalry, which it seemed had a destiny in common with House Liao in the following years of defeat and despair. In the Fourth Succession War, the Capellans were hammered hard and lost vast swaths of territory. Federated Sun's forces completely obliterated the McCarran 1st Regiment early on in the war, and by all accounts, it was an act of eradication, where soldiers were not given any opportunity to surrender. Archibald McCarran was in the fight of his life to save the mercenary unit, which seemed beset upon in every direction. Fighting retreats were successful, but with great sacrifice. On the retreat from the planet Sarna, half of Barton's 2nd Regiment was lost in the fighting, though they reportedly were able to cut the fighting strength of the attacking forces by two-thirds. Rebuilding took place in the 3030s, and Barton's regiment clashed with the forces from the Magistracy of Canopus in a war orchestrated by the Duchy of Andorian. Ultimately, this led to an assault on Canopus, where the Mac raised much of the capital city before being pushed from the system by reinforcements. By 3037, McCarran's armored cavalry had been rebuilt to six regiments in size and was a major player in the defense of Capellan space. In 3039, the Mac once again was charged with raiding House Davian assets. Many of the raids were successful, but a counter-raid by Davian forces on Menke resulted in significant damage and destroyed a recently created 6th Regiment. This back and forth between Davion and Mac raiding missions continued for years. In 3050, McCarran's armored cavalry was back up to six active regiments with a dedicated training regiment on Menke. Archibald McCarran died that same year in a training accident and Colonel Marcus Baxter was an obvious pick to replace him until the McCarran's twin children were of age to take over the family business. Baxter ended up marrying Archibald's widow and becoming the stepfather to Ramses and Faith McCarran. Just before the instigation of the Capellan St. Ives War in 3060, McCarran's armored cavalry was honored by Sun Tzu Liao to be the first mercenary unit officially added to the ranks of the Capellan Confederation Armed Forces. This came with titles an impressive pay package, and the Max homeworlds of Menke and Mitchell were permanently granted to them. While officially a part of the Capellan Armed Forces, the Mac retained some autonomy, command structure, and even training regimen. The Capellan St. Ives War was not good to the Mac, as the fighting was both brutal and without any semblance of restraint. When the 1st Battalion landed on the planet Way in 3060, they were met with a chemical weapon attack, which completely wiped out the unit. When the 2nd Battalion struck Milos in 3062, they were rebuffed by the Eridani Light Horse defenders taking significant losses in the process. With the rise of Word of Blake, 
and the resulting chaos they caused across the inner sphere, McCarran's armored cavalry became popular in the Capellan media as valiant defenders against the zealous Blakists. Some of the Mac battalions fared better than others, as it seemed like every planet was under some sort of attack. The 5th Battalion was even able to go on offensive raids into the Word of Blake Protectorate, which helped put the Blakists on the defensive. Following the formation of Devlin Stone's Republic of the Sphere, McCarran's armored cavalry was stationed along the Capellan Republic border. By this point, both Faith and Ramses McCarran were old enough to lead the organization and took command of the 4th and 2nd Mac. This dual leadership within the organization would be short-lived after the Capellans decided to launch a war against the Republic of the Sphere. Support from the Capellans was lacking, which really means non-existent. 1st Battalion was wiped out on Gang Sing after it was split off from the main force. The 4th's defeat on New Canton was even worse as Faith McCarran was killed in her cockpit of her Star Slayer when a Hastani Legionnaire hit her mech with shots from its rotary AC-5 autocannon. Overcome with grief following the loss of the young McCarran, the 4th fought on and refused to retreat or surrender the area around her fallen mech until just two lances of mechs were left standing. Later in the conflict, the third mech was set up against Stone's revenants on multiple occasions, and while surviving the effort, the units were significantly degraded without anything to show for it. As it stands in the dawn of the Ill Clan era, McCarran's armored cavalry continues to be a significant presence as part of the Capellan forces stationed near the crumbled Republic of the Sphere. It remains an open question if we'll see Mac units as part of a force sent to challenge the emerging Clan Wolf Ill Clan over Terra. If we do see aggression from the Capellans, it would be a pretty safe bet that McCarran's armored cavalry will be in the vanguard. If you're looking to paint up some Mac units, I did some homework in the Capellan Field Manual to find the descriptions of each unit. Each regiment in the McCarran's armored cavalry display the Capellan Confederation crest somewhere on the Mac along with the Mac emblem which is an armored knight on horseback with a red plume on his helm. All of this is on a green triangular background. Each regiment also has an insignia, which is often found on the back shoulder or the upper leg. So here we go. The first is the Knight Riders, and they painted their mechs ash gray with silver trim. Their regimental insignia was a fire-breathing mechanical horse galloping over a green field. The second regiment was known as the Angels Regiment, had dark metallic blue with other color highlights. Regimental insignia was an outline of an angel in silver set on a black background. For the third regiment, the Wild Ones, dark copper mechs with burnished steel highlights. Their regimental insignia was an oversized knight in a combat stance holding a sword. For the fourth regiment, Lord Carson's Cavaliers, dark green on their mechs with white stripes. Regimental insignia was a coat of arms with a knight's helmet and lances topped with pennants, one green and gold and the other green and red. And then finally, the fifth was the Kipps Commandos, gray and blue mechs with silver highlights. Their regimental insignia was a lance spearing a flaming sun. If you've painted up some of McCarran's armored cavalry, please let me know how they look and what regiment you went with. I'd love to see them. I'm tempted to turn one of these Kickstarter boxes into a lance of the Wild Ones for 3rd Regiment. If you have thoughts on which mercenary unit we should look at for the next video, please let me know. There are many out there that you could use some more love. Big thanks to the Ko-Fi crew who are out keeping these videos possible. Make sure to hit the buttons and possibly even share the video with others if you think they might enjoy it. Every little bit helps. Now take care and I'll see you next time. Until then, go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.